Hi there, it's Gabriel here, SEO manager at Hike SEO. And in this video, we'll be talking about search engine indexing and how to improve your website's crawlability. Super important topic so that all of the pages on your website are discoverable and indexable. And the pages that you don't want to be indexed can be blocked from search engines. So let's dive into all of the amazing topics here. So what you'll learn is what it's all about. Uh, why indexing is actually required, um, the three processes of search engines uh, during indexing, uh, ways of indexing your site, and a few Q&As about search engine and indexing. So let's dive right in. What is search engine indexing? It's basically what indexing organizes web content for easy search and retrieval by search engines. So imagine a great analogy is a library. Imagine walking into a library and you're looking for a specific book and you go to the library and you say, I want this book. And then they go in their systems or they go in the back room and they come back and say, okay, follow me. And they basically show you exactly where that book is within a few minutes or less. Uh, so that's basically a search engine, but in a digital form and much, much more efficient, much faster. So it involves crawling and storing web pages and their content. So each web page, just use an analogy, it's like a book and it's in a specific bookshelf, a specific location. Okay, so basically all these web pages, billions and billions of them uh, are in the database, sorted, organized, categorized, ranked, all of this, so that in an instant, your search query can bring up the most relevant results. So. Search engine indexing is used by search engines like Google, Bing, Yahoo, Baidu, DuckDuckGo. Any of these search engines would have an indexing software. So what is a search engine index? It basically is a database of crawled web pages, a huge database of crawled web pages, and basically keeps growing, growing every single minute of every single day with more and more web pages and is continually optimized, refreshed, uh, updated, renewed, all of that. And it, it a enables quick and efficient responses to user search queries. That's the key thing. It needs to be relevant to the user, but also needs to be really quick. So in an instant, someone gets the results that they're looking for. And when they go to those results, it answers their question. It satisfies their intent. Search engines use it to find and rank relevant pages based on complex algorithms. And these algorithms are becoming more and more complex because they're using machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence, and these algorithms are enhancing themselves. So they're becoming more and more advanced as they learn from more and more information that comes through to them. Ranking factors include relevance, authority, and popularity. This is really high level and very simplified. There's hundreds and even thousands of search engine ranking factors out there. Uh, but these are the main things like how relevant is the site to the search query? Uh, how relevant, uh, how author authoritative is it? How trustworthy, credible is it? And how popular is it? Uh, so these are the main ones. Why is search engine indexing required? Good question. Basically, search engines index pages for quick and easy access to relevant results. The more efficiently it's indexed, the quicker it can bring back a relevant result for that user. So imagine you walk into a library, but instead of the books being on the shelf, they're scattered on the floor and there's no organization. And the librarian says, yeah, good luck, find your book in there. And it'll take you like days or weeks to actually find it because you have to go through every single book. However, indexing actually organizes them, puts them back in the shelves, makes them super easy to find. Um, so that's the same thing with search engine indexing. They take the web pages, they organize them, they categorize them, they rank them. And in literally a fraction of a second, they'll bring back a relevant result for you. They use an expansive index to search for web pages that can answer users' queries. So without indexing, search would be super slow and inefficient. It could take days or weeks for you to get a relevant result. But 
thanks to these like algorithms and machine learning and AI and all of that split second. Uh, there you go. There's the search results. So this process allows for a high quality search experience that meets user expectations. Now the key words here are high quality search experience experience. Google wants to provide the best experience it can to its customers, the searchers, and it meets the user's expectations. So it needs to be a relevant result it needs to be a valuable result for them. So these are the key factors. So when you're creating your own website content, think user first, user first, never search engine first. Those are the the days of spammy websites where people are trying to game the search engine algorithms. These days that won't work. These days it's all about the user providing a great experience, providing them the information they want, when they want it, and how they want it. So there are three main processes of search engines. Firstly, they need to crawl the site. They need to discover the pages on your website. Then they need to index those pages in their database. Make sure that they're in the right sections, the right orders, the right categories. And then finally, they're going to rank those um, with your competitors, with other relevant results, with other pages. So make sure that your, your page shows up in the right search results uh, in the right location. So how websites are indexed. So there's different ways how Google and other search engines can discover your web pages and your website. And here are four different ways. Firstly, XML sitemaps. Second, Google Search Console. Third, robots meta tag. And fourth, robot.txt file. Let's go through each one to discover how that works. So with Excel, uh, XML sitemaps, it basically helps, this file helps search engines find all the pages on the website. And generally, um, they're mostly automatically updated if you're using a well-known CMS like WordPress, Wix, Squarespace, any of these. They have XML sitemaps automatically maintained. If you have a custom-coded platform or website, you might have to manually update or use script to update your, um, your XML sitemap. So this happens when basically when you have a new, um, new website, new page, uh, remove a page, edit a page. Uh, it needs to be updated so that when search engines go to that sitemap, they can get an up-to-date kind of map of your website and easily and quickly update their index so that the search results are updated as well. Um, next is Google Search Console. And this is a great tool um, and basically allows you to submit your sitemap. Um, so basically let Google know here, these are all the pages on my site right now, start indexing them. And basically it also allows them to find the sitemap, especially if you're using an unconventional uh, CMS or a custom coded website where the sitemap is not in a you know, specific location. Uh, it basically shows uh, Google where that sitemap is located. There's another tool called the URL inspection tool, and this is for um, requesting an indexing or re-indexing of a specific page or URL. And you can basically submit that URL and Google will crawl it, pick it up, and then re-index it. Let's say you've updated a page um, or, or basically deleted the page or added a new page and you want it to basically get picked up like that, you go to the URL inspection tool. Let's talk about robots meta tag. And this is a Basically, a public page, if not defined or or anything, it's automatically indexed by default. With the robots meta tag, you can add a no index marking. Um, and this is basically an attribute you put in there that basically tells Google, I don't want this page in the search results. So this is especially good for marketing pages, advertising pages, or private access pages that you don't want publicly available or viewable. It might be publicly available if you have a direct link, but you don't want it to show up in Google or other search engines. So robots meta tag can be added to each of these pages in the head section of the HTML uh, with the no index tag. And this says don't index this. So here's an example of that tag 
And in the content section, contact, content attribute, you put no index. Finally, we'll talk about robots.txt. And that this is a file that lives on the server. And you can have rules to specify which directories or pages to crawl or not to crawl on your site. Um, now, the disallow directive that you can put in there tells the search engine bots not to crawl a specific area of the site or specific pages. So definitely use disallow if you don't want Google or other search engines to go to specific area or specific page. Now, key here is to understand that it does not stop them from indexing it. So if that page is already indexed, um, it just means that it won't get crawled again but it's still going to be indexed. So it's different from being indexed. So disallow stops search engines from crawling and going to that page, but it doesn't stop it from being indexed. That's the key. So how websites are indexed. Um, so if a page or directory of pages is already indexed, then it could still be indexed even with disallow. For example, if that page is in the sitemap um, or any other links lead to that page through your site, um, then definitely it could be picked up. So definitely have an XML sitemap reference in the robots.txt file. Uh, so this also helps search engines discover your sitemap, XML sitemap, if it hasn't already. Uh, so you have that in there by default. Now there's alternative search engine consoles that you can use, for example, Bing, and you can use the URL submission tool, which allows you to submit one or more URLs. So if you want to be more indexable um, in Bing, you can do that. Um, they're immediately evaluated for search indexation. So that that's really good. And there's a maximum daily quota for submissions. So if you max out, come back the next day and then keep submitting URLs. There's Yandex and you would go to the sitemap files section and then choose the site from the list and then enter the XML sitemap file URL. Then click add button and then you've submitted it. So here's some common frequently asked questions. Uh, how do you get your website indexed faster? This is a common question because sometimes Google will take its time to re-index something at its own schedule. So how do you actually do that faster? How do you accelerate that? So basics like XML sitemap and robots.txt should be in place. That's a given, so make sure you have that. And the sitemap should be referenced in the robots.txt file, like I said previously. You can use the Google Search Console URL inspection tool to resubmit pages for re-indexing right then and there. So that's definitely something you can do to enhance and, and accelerate that process. And, and definitely if you have updated page um, to resubmit your URL right through there so you can re-index it quicker. Do I need to tell search engines to crawl my website? Good question. So search engines discover websites naturally through backlinks, sitemaps, and Google tools. So you don't necessarily need to tell them unless it's like completely blocked from public access, then obviously you can't access it. Uh, so there's no need for manual submission by default. However, manual submission can improve uh, and speed up the process of indexing or re-indexing. Do I need to alert search engines if I publish new content? Another great question. Well, the XML sitemap, if it uses, if it's in a common like CMS, it automatically updates this. Uh, otherwise, if you need to manual update, when you create new content, make sure you update the XML sitemap as well. So if you have new pages, if you modify pages or remove pages, uh, this usually triggers an automatic uh, sitemap XML update. Can I get my page re-indexed if it's been removed? So let's say Google, for some reason, removed the page because it violates guidelines or whatever, um, or it doesn't meet quality guidelines for some reason. Uh, you need to modify the page according to the webmaster quality guidelines to so go on there make sure it meets those requirements and then submit a reconsideration request to see if the updated page is accepted so if you follow all the rules and guidelines it should be accepted and you should be good to go and then it can be re-indexed how can i stop 
certain pages from being indexed? Good, good question. So let's say you have a marketing page. You don't want it in a Google search results. Uh, you add a no index meta tag to those pages to prevent search engine indexing. So this will basically say, don't put this in the search engine. I don't want it visible there. And so this can be added to in the head section or via a CMS SEO plugin page settings. So if you use Yoast SEO in WordPress or Rank Math in WordPress or any of these platforms that have a plugin or native functionality for SEO, you can no index certain pages or any index, any pages you can no index. Uh, you can also use Google Search Console to remove URLs tool to hide the index pages. Really uh, useful feature. And that's it. So if you have any questions about search engine indexing, do let me know. Um, always uh, happy to answer that. And also make sure that you try Hike SEO. It's a fantastic software uh, for small businesses and also SEO agencies serving small businesses to help improve your SEO. Even if you have no prior SEO, SEO experience or any technical knowledge, it's meant for the beginner. It's meant to be simple and give you actionable steps in the time that you have available every week to move forward and start getting more and more organic traffic. We do have a 14 day money back guarantee, so you can try risk free and definitely sign up hikeseo.co and get started. Cool. Thanks so much. And I will see you in the next video.